So here um, is a chart we've seen a version of before, where we're looking at a wide range of different types of hazard. All of the things that you wind up being concerned about is, is something going to uh, cause cancer, ozone depletion, global warming, explode, break into flames, react and corrode my skin, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, all of those things, as, as we know, you could draw direct lines to all of these physical chemical properties, whether or not something's volatile, whether or not something is, uh, is prone to react with positive charges or negative charges, all of these, these properties, and I should say combina combinations of properties, properties in combination, are going to tell you whether or not this stuff is going to be good for you or deadly. Um, you know, it's also going to tell you whether or not it's going to be useful in a commercial sense or, uh, or useless. So, uh, and we come back to something that we've been saying all semester long. What is it that, that chemists do? They design and manipulate and exploit this stuff. So if you can design and use and exploit this stuff, then you have a tremendous influence over that stuff. You know, I, I, I often say that in the same way that no one has a greater impact on how a book is going to affect its reader than the author, nobody can have a greater impact over whether or not a, a, a building is going to you know, look aesthetically pleasing than its, than its architect, no one is going to have a greater influence on the ultimate consequences for a chemical than the molecular designer. It's at the design stage that you have maximum influence. So I said this is a, a relatively new um, endeavor, a relatively new scientific endeavor. Um, why would that be? Doesn't that seem counterintuitive? When I talk to young students, uh, <laughs> elementary school students are, are great, um, so you'll tell them, well, we are doing this thing called green chemistry, and this is making all of these materials and things so that they're not going to hurt you or hurt the environment, and they look at you and they blink with their wide little eyes and they think, you haven't been doing this all along? <laughs> Are you kidding me? And so why not? Um, well, generally, it's because of what we knew and what we didn't know. So we talked about toxicology evolving from a descriptive science, um, where basically, um, you know, you, you tested things usually on on animals, and you looked to see what the consequences were. And knowing that something is toxic is very different from knowing why and how something is toxic. Once you know the why and the how of something being toxic, then that gives you design handles. So as it emerged from a, from a descriptive science to a mechanistic science, the mechanism of action, the, the, a, a molecular understanding of what's going on, then all of a sudden you have all these design handles. You actually know how to modify things so that they can be uh, less, less toxic. In many ways, uh, uh, green chemistry is, uh, is often called preventative toxicology. So we move from describing to predicting to preventing. Okay, so how did we emerge in getting this understanding? Well, one of the places is from the pharmaceutical industry. Pharmaceutical industry for decades now has uh, generated a treasure trove of insight on the the biological interactions with these molecules that we make, okay? How they get into our bodies, how they uh, interact with uh, various receptors. But there's a difference between pharmaceutical chemicals and industrial chemicals. For, for instance, pharmaceuticals are supposed to be biologically active. That's what makes them definitionally um, a pharmaceutical, an active pharmaceutical ingredient. The vast majority, I often just say 99% of all of those chemicals, of all of chemicals that aren't pharmaceuticals, usually have no intentional biological activity. We can talk about the exceptions if you want, but generally speaking, 
Industrial chemicals are, are meant to be, you know, to be a, a lacquer, are meant to be a color, are meant, they're not meant to have biological activity. With pharmaceuticals, definitionally, the performance of the chemical is related to its biological activity, including reduced toxicity. Performance has generally been a whole separate mindset in the development of industrial chemicals. So function and performance was not defined as being part of, uh, uh, was not defined as including toxicity or hazard. It was, you had function and performance, and then, oh yeah, on this other consideration, you have this thing to worry about, rather than having it being merged. Um, relatively, the volume of pharmaceuticals is minuscule by comparison to industrial chemicals. You, you might literally have billions and billions of pounds of an industrial chemical where a, a very, you know, a very large volume pharmaceutical might be a ton. Because why? You know, the dosage is milligrams uh, per pill. Uh, where, uh, and with pharmaceuticals, you have a well-defined use scenario. You're going to put it in a pill or an injection or something like that, or an inhaler, and it's going to go into a person, et cetera, et cetera. Where the same molecule that might be a polymer building block might be a solvent, might be a other kind of uh, reactant. And you can have a wide range of scenarios crossing all kinds of different sectors, all kinds of different life cycles and end of, end of life considerations. So the, um, the whole green chemistry molecular design element steals liberally from all of those lessons and all of the, the fundamentals that pharmaceuticals gave us and translates them into the, the vast majority of other chemicals, the industrial chemicals. But it's a little bit different. I'm gonna, uh, and this is important. It's taking the lessons of pharmaceutical science and turning it on its head. It's really looking at the whole thing backwards. Because when you're designing a drug, you want to make sure that that drug is able to um, get into your body, cross the necessary biological membranes, make its way to find a, a receptor um, uh, intact and in the form that will react, bind with that receptor, carry out its, its therapeutic function, and then be released uh, from the body. With green chemistry molecular design for reduced toxicity, you want to use all of those same tools to make sure that that molecule can never get into the body, can never cross the necessary biological membranes, can never bind to a particular receptor that would cause a toxic effect, and gets out of the body as quickly as possible. Okay? So you have to have the, the same understanding, the same tools, but use it in a, a, a very different way.